cuando hoy pueda It's going to be every tribe and every language and every nation that will be declaring, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. We're so grateful for the gift of hope that God sent to us with Jesus and his birth. That's the reason we have hope. Amen, church? Let's sing this song together and declare holy. He is worthy. He is immovable. He is unshakable. Can we tell him this morning, God, you're worthy. Jesus, thank you for the name that's above all names.
time. You will always be. Tell him this morning. You will always be. Holy. Holy forever. Can you give him five seconds of praise, church? He's so worthy and he's so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. God, it's with this praise on our lips that we say thank you. We thank you because you're powerful. We thank you because you're wonderful and you're holy and you're worthy, God. From now to the end of the ages, Jesus will declare who you are. We need you and we love you, Father. Would you surround us today with your power and your Holy Spirit and your love, God? Would you give us the courage and the boldness to reach out to those that we love and remind them that they are loved by a holy God? It's in your powerful and mighty name that we pray these things this morning. And the church said, Amen, Amen church. Church, can we have you take a seat and direct your attention to the screens? So this is Brittany and Peyton, and their church family wanted to bless them with a meal and some gifts. What's that on the outside? What does that look like? Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. This one. beyond all that I can ever ask, imagine, or think. We were able to love on families in Jesus' name because of you. So thank you. Thank you so much. For those of you that are visiting South Bay, welcome. My name is Adonis. Hey, you guys, can we give a huge welcome to those that are visiting? Hi. So glad you're here. We are, you guys are about to sing a song, right? Yeah. Are you about to sing a song? They think, I think they are going to sing a song. There's this verse in Mark chapter 10 where Jesus tells the disciples, bring the children unto me. Don't hinder them. Because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. So come on, church. Let's sing and let's praise as our kids are going to lead us in a time of worship. God bless you guys.
and lift up your name because you are worthy of our praise. And we just want to say thank you at this time. We want to say thank you for the grace, the love, and the blessings that you pour out into our lives. It might not be the easiest at times, Lord, but we know, Father, that you are there to pick us up, lift us up, and make sure that we are on the right path. So we thank you for that. And we want to ask that you be in the center of everything as we take in your word at this time. So bless us with your presence because we love you so, so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, if you are elementary school age, come and join us up here, up front. Come on up, you guys. If you are elementary school age, come on up. We want to say Merry Christmas to you guys. There you go. Come on through. You guys, Calvary Chapel South Bay, you can do much better than that for our kids. All right, just have a seat right here in front of me. Good job. Great job, you guys. How about that children's choir? Didn't they do great? All right. Well, I'm going to have, um, sorry, can you, I'm going to get all in three. Why don't you go over there? There we go. Okay. I've got a question for you. Okay. Does anyone know what the word wonderful means? Who knows what the word wonderful, all right, we'll start right here. What does the word wonderful mean? Let me make sure. There you go. The, world, the word wonderful means glorious. Glorious. Wow. Okay. Someone over here. God and Jesus. Oh, whoa. That's a good one. What does the word wonderful mean? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? All right. Let's come away over here. What does the word wonderful mean? Something spectac I mean, spectacular. Whoa. Okay, has anyone ever seen anything wonderful? Something that was spectacular? Anybody? Oh, let me go way over here. And let me see, you've seen something wonderful? What have you seen so wonderful? It was this morning. I got a new skateboard from my mom. Whoa. <laughs> What about you? Have you ever seen anything wonderful? All right, so, um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, have you seen something wonderful? When I went hiking at Yosemite and I liked all the nature. Whoa, that's a good one. Great job. Okay, can you imagine, okay, hands down, can you imagine how wonderful it was when the shepherds were sitting in the field just like you, sitting down on the ground, and all of a sudden the whole sky filled with angels. How many of you, go, how many of you would be afraid if you saw a bunch of angels? How many of you would go, wow, oh wow. Well, let me ask you a question. What's the most wonderful Christmas gift you've ever gotten? Hmm, all right. A paint set. A what? A paint set. Oh, a paint set, okay. What about you? My family. Okay, that's an extra Christmas gift. Okay, what about you? Uh, is a Lego Mario. A Lego Mario. Okay, let's see. What's your favorite Christmas gift? My mom and a Nintendo Switch. Hey, Mom, I just want you to know you are on par with the Nintendo Switch. Okay, just wanted you to know that. Okay, great job. That's, let me tell you something. That's actually high ranking. I want you to know that. Okay, I have another question. We've talked about wonderful. I even talked about something that was wonderful when the angels showed up. Why is Jesus so wonderful? Okay. Let me come over here. Why is Jesus so wonderful? He can perform miracles and he can rise people from the dead. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Do you have an answer? Why is Jesus so wonderful? Uh, a present. Oh, because a present. He is a present. Why is Jesus so wonderful? Good. Okay. All right. Over here again. 
Jesus is so wonderful because he is God's child. Whoa. All right, we're going to come way, 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 way over here. Who would like to tell me why Jesus is... Let me pick someone I haven't picked before. Because he died for our sins. Wow, good job. Did she take yours? Oh, okay. Let's see if you got another one. What is yours over here? Why is Jesus so wonderful? Because he is our father. Whoa, we got some great doctrine coming out of our Kid Life Ministry. Let's give it up for our Kid Life Ministry. Good job. All right. Why is Jesus so wonderful? Because he, because he made this world. Great job. Well, you guys, Jesus is wonderful for the reason that he told you. Because he died on the cross for our sins. He didn't come just to be a baby. But you know the most wonderful thing about Jesus? Is that he came as a kid. That means he understands everything that you go through. You see, because Jesus came as a child and he went through everything that you went through, he understands you. So when you pray and talk to him, guess what? He understands because he was a kid too. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, we're going to let you guys go back to your seats. Why don't you guys head back to your seats? Great job. And church, as they're heading back to their seat, would you just say Merry Christmas to the person sitting next to you? Greet them in Jesus' name. Merry Christmas, guys. Well, Merry Christmas, Calvary Chapel, South Bay. Great. Merry Christmas. Great to be with you guys. We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 9. Who would have thought Mariachi would be here on Christmas Eve? Amen. So, someone told me in the last service, I felt like I came to a family Christmas party. And I was like, we succeeded. Because if anyone should be rejoicing about Jesus, it should be the church of the living God. Amen. All right, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we are so thankful that we get to celebrate the fact that you left heaven and came to earth for us. And now as we stop for just a minute and consider all that you've done and how wonderful you are, I pray, Lord, that you would be blessed by our hearing of the word, and would you change our lives? In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you're a parent, you know how long it takes to decide what will be the name of my child. Because names are important. In fact, if you go over our, to our nursery you won't find a lot of Judases there. You won't find a lot of Benedict Arnolds there. What you will find is a lot of Jesuses over in our nursery. Because a name is very important. In fact, we have friends of ours that named their two boys Maximus and Leonidas. They want their boys to be conquerors. They want their boys to be strong and mighty. And so they named their children these names. Now for us, our son, we named Timon. Timon means honorable because we wanted an honorable child. Abigail, oh, we named her after David's wife. Abigail, she was such a gentle spirit. She saved David's life. She saved David's entire uh, uh, group's life. We named Selah, Selah Hope. It means to pause and reflect on the hope of Christ's coming. Elia, joy, her name means God is my Lord and in him I find joy alone. Micaiah, oh, Micaiah was a prophet and he stood as the only truth-telling prophet amidst a bunch of liars. And then our son, Emmanuel. We named him Emmanuel to always remind us that God is with us. And each one of their names we prayed over, each one of their names we thought through, we discussed, and God 
took an eternity past to give us the name of his son. It's Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Would you take a look? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful. Now what's interesting about that word wonderful is that it's a noun. It's not an adjective. It's not describing the kind of counselor. It stands alone, completely connected to the person of God, that God is wonderful. It's a word that is totally connected to God alone because it's supernatural. It's supernaturally unique. It's supernaturally extraordinary. In fact, It's hard even to explain. It's hard even to understand. Well, certainly the birth of Christ qualifies for something wonderful. It's Luke chapter 1. Would you take a look? Only God could do something like this. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I don't know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And then to confirm the message, the angel tells Mary something even wonderful. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. She was way beyond the time of childbearing. And God allowed her to get pregnant. For with God, say this with me, nothing will be... 1230, do you believe that? Say it with me again. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Isn't he wonderful? No wonder the the shepherds left rejoicing. No wonder the wise men would travel for almost two years to bring their gifts to Jesus. They knew what they were looking at. They were looking at a miracle, something that only God can do, that God would send his son to give peace to man, to reveal God's goodwill to men. And the goodwill is that he's opening the door of heaven just like the angels told the shepherds, I'm telling you. But there's something else to notice about this term, wonderful. The Bible says his name will be called. People are going to know him as wonderful. Now, what I find amazing is that Isaiah wrote this 740 years prior to the birth of Christ. Prior to the birth of Christ. And there's one thing that you can be sure of is that all of heaven is confident of this. That not only is his name wonderful people are going to know him as wonderful. They're going to say he is wonderful. In fact, we're still singing about him today, 2,000 years later, because he is wonderful. He leaves people in awe. He does things that blows your mind, like restore families and redeem lives. His truth causes us to marvel because he says things to us that sets us free from worry. Bitterness, anger, and hurt. His words speak to us and invite us into a better way of love and forgiveness and mercy. His life, oh, his life astounds everyone who knows him. In fact, listen to what God would tell the prophet Habakkuk. It's Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5. Look among the nations and watch. In other words, You'll never see this anywhere in the world. He says this, be utterly astounded. That's the only response to God. For I will work, this is God speaking, I will work a work in your days which you would not believe though it were told you. Isn't he wonderful? That God alone can do something that you can't even explain it. You won't even believe it. No wonder the perspective of heaven is with God, nothing will be impossible. Let me tell you why. Because he's wonderful. He can take the impossible and make it completely possible. That's the perspective of heaven. 
He's a wonderful life. He's a wonderful life. Do you remember that movie, It's a Wonderful Life? Well, we just took out the it's and we put on the he's because he's a wonderful life. We took out the family and we put our family into the picture because we have a wonderful life because of Jesus' wonderful life. He's a wonderful life. But let me tell you about this movie. Let me tell you about this story. It's a Christmas classic. It's a wonderful life. It's about a man who wanted to end it all. His name was George Bailey. And so heaven sends an angel by the name of Clarence. And Clarence's job is to convince George Bailey to live. So what Clarence does is he begins to show George what life would have been like if he never would have been born. Can you imagine if Jesus never would have been born? There'd be no golden rule. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. There would be no golden rule. Moral standards would fluctuate with the culture. Do you know that the teaching of the Beatitudes is the foundation for every hospital that exists? Do you know that Christians created hospitals? Do you know that because of the teaching style of Jesus, it was Christians that developed education facilities? Do you realize how Christians have impacted the world? Not to mention Jesus' value of women changed the ideology of the Roman Greco world, which still impacts us today. Do you know most importantly that the open door of salvation to every tribe, tongue, and nation is the foundation that flies in the face of racism or any other ethnic divide. That's because Jesus was born. Most importantly, we wouldn't have peace with God. We wouldn't experience God's goodwill if it wasn't for Jesus being born. He's a wonderful life. He's a wonderful life. Countless lives in our family have been restored, redeemed, and renewed. Prodigals have come back home. In fact, we have peace in the midst of the Christmas chaos because he gives us a peace that passes understanding. He's a wonderful life. But most importantly, church, we get to go to heaven because a babe was born and placed in swaddling clothes in a manger. You see, that babe would grow up, and that babe would become the man who would die on the cross as the God-man, and Jesus made a claim of himself. It's John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, I want to break that down for you. Because I believe those words are wonderful. And the first thing that I want you to hear is that he has a wonderful way. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And he has a wonderful way about him. You see, this word word way, it means a road, just a regular road. And I've traveled on many roads before. In fact, I've gotten sick on some roads as they were winding down the mountain. I've gotten a headache on some roads as I've been, the roads had potholes and every single time we hit a pothole, my head hit the side of the car. I've been on some wrong roads before. In fact, as a missionary in Liberia, a friend of mine, we had reached a crossroads and I knew the right way to go, but he wanted to go the wrong way. And when we went the wrong way, we found ourselves in the midst of a rebel ambush in the midst of a civil war that was going on in Liberia, West Africa. Listen, I know what it means to take a wrong road. That's why I prefer to put an address in my Apple phone and for it to tell me exactly what road to take. And can I tell you, Jesus is better than Apple? Because Jesus provides the direction on a narrow road that leads us straight to God. And Jesus said, I am the way. I'm that road. I know how to get you there. Now let me tell you something. Choosing to travel on that road will prove to be wonderful. I'm not saying there's not going to be windy. I'm not saying there's not going to be potholes. 
I'm not saying that you may not get lost every once in a while, but Jesus got a great way to reroute you. He's got a great way to get you back on track. But choosing to go on this road is the most wonderful way. You see, the disciples, they came to understand it. In Matthew 8, let me tell you what's going on. Jesus is on the Sea of Galilee. They're in a boat, and Jesus is asleep. A big storm comes up, and the boat is about to be destroyed, and they wake Jesus up. We're going to die. Have you ever done that before? <laughs> Do you have any idea what I'm going through, Jesus? And Jesus just kind of rocking his sleep. What's making us nervous, the waves hitting the boat, is just rocking Jesus to sleep. And we wake him up. Jesus, you got to do something. And the Bible says that he spoke to the storm, peace be still. Take a look. So the men marveled. They wondered, saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Let me tell you, church, there may be storms on the road that Jesus puts us on, but he will deliver you from them because he's still delivering people today. He's still delivering today. Oh, there was another time that the disciples learned the road of Jesus is the best way to go. Listen, it's from Mark's gospel, chapter 6. The disciples are now on the Sea of Galilee by themselves. Another storm comes up, and Jesus sees them on the water. And the Bible says he walks on the water to get to them. And when he gets to them, take a look. Then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased. And they were greatly amazed in themselves. They wondered beyond measure and they marveled. They wondered, what in the world? Let me tell you something about this road that you're on. There may be problems, but he will do whatever it takes to get to you when you call on his name. He's still, still reaching out to help people today. He's with you. Once again, the disciples are faced with another huge problem. A kid is brought to them and he's filled with demons and they're unable to do anything. So the father brings his child to Jesus. Parent, how many of us have brought our kids to Jesus? And we're asking Jesus, would you please bring them back home? Would you deliver them from the demons of addiction, from the demons of alcoholism? And the Bible says that when the father brought the son to Jesus, and as he was still coming, the demon threw him down and convulsed him. He likes to make a big show. Then Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the child, gave him back to his father. Jesus is still in the business of giving children back to their parents. And they were all amazed. They wondered at the majesty of God. But while everyone marveled at all the things which Jesus did, he said to his disciples, they're all in wonder about this demon-possessed kid that was saved. Jesus said, let these words sink down into your ears. For the Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. Jesus is saying to them, if you think delivering this kid from a demon is wonderful, wait till you see me rise from the dead. He is wonderful. And his way is wonderful. And he's still changing people's lives today because his name is not only wonderful, his name is Emmanuel. He's with us on the road that leads straight to God. But Jesus said, I am the way and I am the truth. You see, he has a wonderful truth. He has a wonderful truth. It's Matthew chapter 7, verse 28. Jesus has just given the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 is the whole Sermon on the Mount. And at the end of that sermon, the crowd is listened, and so it was, when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished. They were in wonder, in awe at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. You see, when the Bible is telling us that, the Bible is letting us know that Jesus practiced what he preached. In fact, the Bible is letting us know that he already was practicing what he was about to preach to them, and then he preached it to them. But the scribes, they only told you what to do. They didn't live the life. They just told you what to do. But Jesus was different. 
he put into practice everything that he preached. For example, he healed the Roman centurion servant. The Romans were the enemy of Israel. But Jesus said, love your enemy. He went the second mile and he washed the disciples' feet there in the upper room. And when they beat him and when they crucified him, he turned the other cheek and said, Father, forgive them. Let me tell you something about Jesus' wonderful truth. He didn't leave truth up to our interpretation of what he said. He lived it in front of us so that we would know exactly what it means when he says you must lose your life to find it for my sake. That's the wonderful truth of Jesus. Now, we may not always like his truth, but his truth is the wisdom that we need to get through this life. He knows exactly what to say to help us live life. Let me explain. Jesus is God. He said it himself. Look at John chapter 10, verse 30. I and the Father are one. In other words, I'm God. And then he would say again in John 14, 9, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus is making a truth. He's giving a declaration of truth. And his wonderful truth is this, I am God. And if Jesus is true, and I believe that he is, that means he's got all of the nature of God in himself. Do you know what that means? That means that Jesus is wonderfully omniscient. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been. So be good for goodness sake. Can you believe they ascribed that to Santa and it's about Jesus? He knows everything. There's no situation he's not aware of. He knows your past, and he says, I'll forgive you. He knows your present, and he says, I'll be there with you. He knows your future, and he says, you better go my way because your way don't work. He's all-knowing. He's wonderfully omniscient. You see, he knows exactly what to tell you to do because he knows what lies ahead. Do you know how many people I meet out in the lobby, and they tell me, Oh, I wasn't going to come to church today. How did you know exactly? Did my wife call you and tell you what to say? He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So come to Calvary Chapel to get the truth. Oh. <laughs> That's not how the song goes. I just want you to know that. You see, he spoke directly to you because he knows exactly what you need to hear. He's also wonderfully omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He has the power to help you do what he's asking you to do or help you get through what you're going through. You don't have to do life on your own strength. He's got a gift for you, Christian. He's so wonderful that he said, I will share my power with you, my Holy Spirit with you, to help you get through this life. Let me tell you something. Jesus doesn't hold back the truth. He knows this life is going to be difficult. He knows there's going to be trials. And oftentimes we ask God, why? So did Job. But God didn't answer him why. God said, I'm God and I can do what I want to do. And do you remember Jesus? When Jesus was on the cross, walking through his greatest trial, he cried out to God, why have you forsaken me? And heaven was silent. And is it possible that God doesn't give us the answer to why because we can't handle it? But he promises to give us the power to get through it. It's Luke chapter 11. Would you take a look at the screen? This is a promise from God to us. If a son asks for bread and a father 
from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Let me put it in modern day English. If he asks for a honey baked ham, are you going to give him liver with onions? <laughs> if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? He loves you so much and he's so wonderful that he may not answer your question why, because he's God, but he will give you the power to get through if you just ask him for the power of his Spirit. Jesus claimed himself to be God, then he's got to be wonderfully omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. He's available for your phone call anytime you call. He doesn't send you to voicemail. He doesn't make you text. He's so excited that you call that he immediately picks up because the word of God says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. He cares for you. You see, he's wonderfully omnipresent. Oh, people would listen to this truth from Jesus, and they would be marveled. Take a look at the screen. The Bible says that after Jesus would give these truths, the, the Matthew 22, 22 says, when they heard these words, they marveled. They were in wonder. And then take a look what happened. And left him and went their way. Will you marvel at these words? Are you in the wow of looking at like a Yosemite and you just heard that wherever you go, Jesus is with you. Whatever you go through, he'll give you the power of his spirit. Or are you going to walk out of here and just go your way at these wonderful words from Jesus? Well, I haven't convinced you yet. Let me give you one more wonderful truth from the Lord in the midst of our crazy Christmas chaos. Let me tell you something. How many of you finished your, part, your uh, gift shopping? You're done. Okay. How many of you still got a little bit more to go? Go ahead. Raise your hand. I want you to be honest. Raise your hand. Okay. Don't go to Target. The line is out the door. <laughs> and if you go to the Del Amo Mall, you know what? If you go to the Del Amo Mall, raise your hand. We want to pray for you. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Church, let me tell you something. You want to lose your Christmas spirit? <laughs> Remember this one thing. In John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus gives a wonderful truth. Peace I leave with you. My peace. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Did you hear that, church? He gives us peace with God even when we're at Delamo Mall. Though everyone is crazy, joy to the world, the Lord is come. And when the world is bumping and shoving and you know you've been in that parking lot, your blinker is on at Costco. And the car pulls out the wrong way and the other car pulls in and you just, joy to the world. How many of you have had that happen to you this week? <laughs> We've got a peace with God no matter what we go through. Because let me tell you what the world is going through. They're afraid to die. They're afraid to die. That's why there's so much plastic surgery. <laughs> Everybody wants to look young. Everybody wants to stay young somehow, some way. They're afraid, and they're afraid of their future. And the peace that Jesus gives takes away that fear of death, takes away that fear of future because you have a truth that can transform your life. He gives you peace. The world can't offer that peace. You can't buy it. 
You can't buy that peace that God announced from heaven is a peace on earth. It's God's offer of peace despite what you go through on this world that you can be in heaven with God. That's a peace that comes from Jesus. What a wonderful truth. But finally, church, he's a wonderful life. He's a wonderful life. At a church our size, I meet with a lot of people. And there's so many people that live in remorse and regret. They live in shame. And they live in guilt because of their past. And as I'm meeting with them, they look back and they begin to wonder, what in the world was I thinking? How did I get here? Well, you chose to go your road and not the Lord's. You chose to trust your truth and not his wonderful truth. But Jesus offers a wonderful life. In fact, in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says this, I come that you can have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Let me tell you, if anyone knows how to lead us in the right life, isn't it the one that created us? He knows exactly the life that we need to live. That's why the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. The disciples knew this to be true. That's why when Jesus said that he was going to go and die, their fear and anxiety began to fill their heart and life because they had learned the life that Jesus offers. It's a wonderful life. And you know what's so wonderful about his life? Because not only does he offer an abundant life, he's so wonderful that he can redeem the mess of life that you found yourself in. And he can give you new life. Take a look at the screen. It's Colossians chapter 2. And you, being dead in your trespasses. In other words, you made a mess of your life. And the uncircumcision of your flesh. In other words, you tried it on your own. He made alive. He can redeem. He can restore. He can renew. He can refresh. He made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. He is so wonderful that even if you've messed up, you can be born again. You can get a new life. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. You see, Jesus made several claims about this wonderful life that he offers. In fact, it's John chapter 6, verse 35. He says, I am the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. Let me tell you something. There's nothing like carbs at Christmas. <laughs> Christmas cookies. Let me tell you something. I'm a wise person. I've realized I'm a wise person. I did not speak to the ladies of our church until after Christmas. I have gotten chocolate cake. Lemon cake. I have gotten Christmas cookies. I got Kit Kat cookies. I didn't even know they had Kit Kat cookies. But I had Kit Kat cookies. I had chocolate chip cookies. I have eaten. I put them all down. And when I eat that chocolate cake, there's nothing like Christmas carbs. Let me tell you something. My wife makes a Bahamian macaroni and cheese. It's like carbs in a dish. And when I eat those carbs, I just roll off the table onto the couch. I feel so satisfied. I feel so fulfilled. And Jesus said, I'm the best Christmas carb you could ever have in your life. I'm better than the Kit Kat Christmas cookie. When the Bible says, taste and see that I'm good, what the Bible is saying is Jesus can completely satisfy you. He will not only satisfy your hunger for the world, he can satisfy your thirst for the world because he's the living water. And when you taste that the Lord is good, you'll find your purpose. You'll find your fulfillment. And not only that, he tags on inexpressible joy to go along with what he offers. He's the bread of life. He's the best Christmas card you could ever have. But let me tell you what else he says about this wonderful life. In John chapter 8, verse 12, he says, I am the light of the world. You see, light shows people the way in the midst of darkness. 
And if you found yourself in the midst of darkness, his way of doing life will lead you out of darkness and into light. He is the light of the world. And the reason he wants to lead you into light is because he made a claim of his wonderful life in John chapter 10, verse 11, that he's the good shepherd. He cares for you. Andre and I had the chance to be shepherds for a summer. And I hate to break this to you, something about sheep. Sheep are dumb. <laughs> and I know why Jesus calls us sheep. You could put a sheep's feet in water, but if you don't put its head down, it won't know to drink. And when a wolf attacks, and they do, when a wolf attacks, do you know what a sheep does? Oh, it's ferocious. Bah. It's like rough. I mean, and when they really want to be ferocious, they roll over. And it's like telling the wolf, just eat me. I mean, you might as well just go ahead and eat me. Without a shepherd caring for the sheep, they wouldn't survive. And Jesus knows that. And he says, I'm the good shepherd. I want to care for you. I want to provide for you. I want to protect you from the way of this world that wants nothing more than to kill, steal, and destroy your life. He says, I'm the good shepherd. But most importantly, Jesus says something about his wonderful life in John chapter 11, verse 25. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Amen. Hey, church. There's a truth about life. Every single person in here will take a last breath. Pastor Chet, I brought a friend. That's not a Christmas thought. Oh, yes, it is. It's because God wanted to spend an eternity to, with you when you take your last breath that he sent that baby through Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because that baby would grow up and become the God-man Jesus who would live a sinless life, who would die on the cross to take away the sins of the world, and he would rise from the grave three days later so that he could offer you eternal life. The best thing that I can tell you is that one day you'll take a last breath, but Jesus wants to give you a gift, the gift of salvation. Now... This leaves you with a choice. When the people heard the wonderful word of Jesus, they came to church, they heard it, and they just went out into L.A. and went to Target. And next thing you know, <laughs> the Christmas spirit was out the window. See, Jesus had done so many wonderful things in his ministry. He's still doing it today. And there was a group, oh, Jesus is at the end of his ministry, and he's coming in during the triumphant entry. And everyone's shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, he's so wonderful. Except for one group. Matthew's gospel. Take a look. But when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, so they saw them. Children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. They were mad. I can't believe I have to come to a 1230 service. My mom told me, no service, no honey baked ham. Here I am. <laughs> so I'm here. 1230 on Sunday. I should be at Target. Now I'm going to have to go stand in the four o'clock line. I've heard everything you got to say about how wonderful Jesus is, but I'm mad. You can make that choice. Because I've told you how wonderful he is. And though they saw the wonderful things they did, they were mad. Or you can be like the church. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 15, verse 3, they sing the song of Moses the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb saying, 
Great and marvelous, wonderful are your works. Lord, God Almighty, just and true are your way. O King of the saints. You saw that today. You heard it in a Nigerian language, and you heard it in Spanish. You heard the praise. You saw how wonderful God is because everyone in this choir and everyone that's on this stage, the wonderful Jesus has changed every one of their lives. And so they have purposed to sing praises to God. You can make that decision. You can make the decision to be amongst those in heaven that sing the song to the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your works because the greatest work that he's done He saved you. Or you can choose to be. Are you almost done? Because i got a ham to get to. It's your choice. I guarantee if you choose the way of God, your life will never be the same again. Would you pray with me? Our Father, we're so thankful that we get to celebrate in this season, Christmas. Time to remember how good you are that you sent your son as a baby so he could understand us, yet be without sin. So would you minister to us now by the power of your Holy Spirit Jesus' name. Christian, you're looking back on 2023. There's been some storms. Maybe your marriage has been a little stormy. Relationships, job, I don't know. And you're marching into 2024 wondering, can it be different? You've asked God, why? Why? And he hasn't answered. He has today. He says, you're not on your own. I have a gift for you, my Holy Spirit. And all you have to do, Christian, is ask me for him. And I'll give you the power to march right into 2024. And you'll make it through. You'll be able to go to Target and sing joy to the world. Even when someone took your parking space. Because I give you peace. And you can have it by the power of my spirit. But I also want to speak to the person that doesn't know Jesus. Listen. Jesus came as a kid. Because he became human. Wow. The God of eternity loved us so much that he became like you and I so he could say, I understand. Then he died for us and he rose again. You've done life on your own, but you're still empty. You need a Christmas carb, I'm telling you. And his name is Jesus. He fulfills. He satisfies. And if you don't know Jesus, when you take your last breath, don't blame him for where you end up. Because it won't be with God. That's a truth from Jesus, not from me. Oh, Pastor Chet, are you going to do an altar call at Christmas? You better believe I am. Let me tell you why. Because the greatest gift that you could receive this Christmas is either the power of his Holy Spirit or his son, Jesus Christ, to save you from your sin. So Christian... If you want to ask him for the power of your Holy, his Holy Spirit, then you be the first to get up out of your seat. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior and Lord, 
would you receive the gift of his son? And what I'm going to ask you to do, get up out of your seat and come forward. That's called a step of faith. And what you're going to hear is everyone around here is going to be starting to applaud and to clap because of what Jesus is doing in your life. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And if you want Jesus, follow his example. Come forward as we sing this song. Take that step of faith. Amen. God bless you. out of your chest, that's the Holy Spirit. You just don't know him yet. He's doing this. Go forward. He's hitting you. He's trying to get your attention because he has a new life for you. If that's you and you know the Spirit is pounding your chest, would you get up here? I'm going to give you just a minute. Is there someone else that would say, I want Jesus today? Amen. 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 God bless you, brother. Amen. Hey, you haven't joined our church, you've come to Jesus. And he's going to change your life. And the reason they're all applauding is because they know what you're about to enter into. A wonderful life. A wonderful life. And I wanna pray with you and I wanna give you words to say to talk to Jesus. And our church, because we've got your back, we're gonna say these words with you. Because we're, we are with you. And so would you just, Say these words after me as we talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, I receive your gift today. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit and salvation. I believe in you and I need you. And today, I'm asking you, give me new life. In Jesus' name. Hey, listen, Pastor Pat is right here. Pastor Pat is right there. He's waving his Bible. We would love to give you a Bible and a Bible study and just pray with you. You'll be back in your seats. Like I said, you've not joined our church. We just want to pray with you. So would you just go with Pastor Pat and uh, we'll be applauding as you go. Church, would you let them know how thankful we are? God bless you guys. Hey, here at Calvary Chapel South Bay, we memorize scripture. Our memory verse is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Would you say it with me? His name will be called... Wonderful. Our challenge to change this week, have a Merry Christmas. God bless you guys. From our family to you, we love you. Merry Christmas. Let's worship the Lord.